Uh, welcome to KubaCon Cloud Native Quam North America 2023. This is our maintenance track for Cooper Edge. Thank you everyone for coming. So my name is Inding. I'm the uh, maintainer and one of the TSC members. So I will give some deep dive to the Cooper Edge with our latest uh, community update. So uh, the Cooper Edge project, uh, the goal for this one is try to solve edge computing problem with cloud native approach. So we oriented by the cloud computing, the scenario, uh, including the far edge, near edge, including the IoT device, also all the way to the CDN, the large cloud edge. So uh, this will consistent with uh, applications, resource management, uh, data, and device. So we just recently released our 1.15 release uh, last month. So here is the release notes. If you have questions, uh, please let me know. Uh, there is some updates. Uh, the detail, the link is there, and also we are in full release every year. So it's a, we were following the upstream Kubernetes do uh, full release per year. However, Kubernetes just updated to three release per year, but we still keep the full release per year to give the community very frequent update to ensure we have all the things to catch up. So the Kube Edge is the first cloud native edge cloud computing the OSS project. Uh, we follow the open governance. Everybody are welcome to contribute. We cloud uh, we connect the cloud and edge in the cloud native way. We are in the incubation space in the cloud native. We are applying to graduation after this KubeCon uh, because every TSC member in the CNCF is in this meeting, in this conference. So after this conference, uh, the TSC member will initiate the cloud, uh, the cloud native community. Uh -oh. So a brief history. So we initiate this uh, edge. We initiate the process from 2018. So we launched our open source on 2018 November, and we donated to CNCF. So after this five years journey, we are applying to the graduation stage. So we want to be a graduated project in CNCF officially. So I'm going to give the project updates. So uh, I, I don't, because this architecture is in our website, I have introduced that in the last couple of years. So basically, we are doing seamless cloud edge coordination. So one thing, the different cloud and edge is we achieve edge autonomy. And also for the edge node, we try to achieve low resource consumption. And also one important thing is for the IoT case, we simplify the device communication. And I will go a little bit deep dive in the following slide. And we always following the open ecosystem. We'll come to everyone, every company to contribute to the project. So let's briefly to see the process we deploy a pod in the net uh, edge node. So it's very similar to uh, Kubernetes deployment. The difference is the edge node is on the remote side. So supposedly that will be have a low bandwidth and also the uh, high latency. Uh, before the Cooper Edge, we were experiencing the difficulties we need to develop either our OTA protocol to deploy the app to the far remote edge node, or you have to manually send somebody to do that. So this project, the goal is to deploy application to the remote edge more cloud native way. So you can see it's very similar to Kubernetes deployment. So we 
on the cloud side, you use list and watch have a desired state. Then after you do the Kuber control apply, then uh, the scheduler will see your desired state have the pod to deploy. So we up the we the scheduler will update the pod binding to the node. Then it will be in persist in the etcd. After that, the cloud core is the new Kubernetes edge part. So the edge controller watch this pod update desired state. Then we through our protocol from the cloud hub to tell the edge hub to see, okay, we got the desired state update. Then edge core will communicate with the local deployment update the update the uh, desired state in an edge node, then the edge core is responsible for create the pod is similar to the kubelet. So you can see the pod creation is very similar to Kubernetes. So we are following this cloud native way. So as a application developer, you don't need to do anything for on your side. It's very similar to your deploy application on the Kubernetes. You just update your desired state, and that's it. Now I'm talking about a little bit, I promise, about the IoT. So <coughs> this uh, play features we are implemented from 112. So we have the um, model bus mapper to the DMI framework. So we are working in progress for Bluetooth uh, serial port mapper based on the DMI framework. So we decouple the control plane and data plane for LT device. The device will be as a service. So uh, the data is transmission from uh, over the edge mesh. So the goal is we help, we want to help developers focus on their own application development, not the device management remotely. So we reduce the bandwidth, so reduce the channel congestions between cloud and edge, and also it's more flexible and unified way to manage your IoT device. So this is take advantage of the CRD from the Kubernetes. The detail, uh, the link I put in here. So here is the overview. So there will be three stages. In the API level, we, you do the DMI implementation and the report to device train. So this way you can manage your, you can manage your device through the metadata and manage all this device life cycle. The second layer will be the control plane and data plane. So uh, in the dev module, you connect the DMI and device driver and you define your data plane module include the data process capacity. Uh, device driver is the lowest level that e expose device driver interface to the users and manage the need of various type of uh, IoT devices. So as I said, the, the Bluetooth is under development, so it should be ready in two releases. Here is a little bit more deep dive for the Cloud Edge Mapper data plane. So we provide a RESTful API to from the provide edge side data pooling capacity. And we provide data persistent capacity in the edge node locally, then we synchronize back to the cloud. So this will be very easy for the developers to maintain or to control your device, device life cycle. So you don't need to worry about uh, how you can maintain the device. So you only operate from cloud side. Uh, here is a little bit deep dive for the architecture uh, based on the time. So I will skip if you are interested. Uh, this slide will upload in the website and you can take a deeper review. Now I'm talking about, I mentioned the edge communication through the edge mesh. 
Edge Mesh is developed by our SIG networking. Is here is the uh, deep dive. So it is adaptive multi edge cloud edge networking. We provide a tunneling. So it's kind of a service a serverless design. It have a built in the edge local DNS. So it's communicate communicated communicated through uh, between the edge nodes and edge cloud communication. So it supports layers four and layer seven traffic management. So edge mesh can cross subnet to do the cross subnet communication. We are working in progress to support uh, standard Istio for service governance. So that work in progress, we should be able to finish that within a year. Oh, I, I mentioned, uh, I forget to mention that's a consistent service discovery and uh, assess experience. It's cross edge and cloud. So if you are interested, you can join our SIG networking to have a deep look at the, our sub project is the edge mesh is in our repo. Uh, now is the SIG AI. We have a sub project called uh, Sedna. It's kind of a distributed AI collaborated. It provides AI collaboration kit. So we call it a collaborative learning instead of uh, increment. It's an increment learning process. So it defines an AI framework with edge cloud synergy. Uh, for other AI or distributed AI learning, uh, there have some bias based on your uh, data set on the individual edge node. So this framework try to do collaboration increment AI learning to uh, remove this uh, data bias on the each individual remote node. And so it compatible with uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, the uh, pedal is from uh, Baidu and also Monsco from uh, Huawei. So it support multiple AI frameworks. So if you want to try, you can go to our uh, Sina in our community repo is and is on GitHub. Uh, security. So we are one of the first CNCF projects reach L4, the supply chain level for security artifacts. Security here is the link and the QR code for our full auditor report. So it's persisted by the third party. We is the one, the first one reaching this L4 level. And also we are one of the first CNCF project. We integrate with a fuzzing tech uh, testing. So here is a full report. So if you're interested, you can go there or you can scan the QR code to see the details. Also, we have done threat modeling and also security protection analysis. So here is a full details. So here is a QR code. If you are interested, you can go there. Basically, we do uh, all this level for this analysis. Uh, let me show you some more details. So here is our policy and uh, vulnerability management. So we have our uh, method to report a vulnerability or kernel vulnerability and have this formalized the remediation process. So you can see we have the stage uh, reporting. Whenever we got the vulnerability reporting, we uh, have a seek security to confirm that. We do our uh, SRC security response community to respond to that and do the patching. Then we do this uh, embargo stage for restricted disclosure. Then after our partner already patched that, so we do the public a disclosure to secure our partners. So here is our details uh, doc. So the link is on the bottom left. 
the QR code on the right. If you're interested, you can to see our formalized procedure. Now the robotics is different from the IoT. So robotics will be a more complicated uh, device connect to the edge. So it's locally consistent with the Dell experience. We provide very convenient R&D in simulations. So you can simulate your robotic robot control uh, without the real one. You can simulate uh, all the process. Then you can achieve out of box uh, the robot skill when, whenever you have your uh, robot connect to the edge. So it's very efficient robot operation management is similar to the device management. So we provide unified access of a heterogeneous robots. So it have a collaborated management of a multiple agent. So it, the robotics have a regular community meeting every two weeks. If you are interested, you can find our, uh, the calendar in our GitHub. So let me show you some case with the user case we provided. So uh, we partner with a few partners already. So it's including the, uh, we deploy on the offshore, the oil field on the, over the sea is a typical low, is a low bandwidth case at the very remote restricted, uh, restricted uh, resource. And uh, the CDN is a large edge cases. And also we deploy on the toll collector, uh, the highway toll uh, booth. So that one is, is very heterogeneous divide, uh, edge cases. Some are ARM edge nodes, some are x86. And also uh, some are have a high speed connection in the good area, some is only 2G is re, uh, radio network, so it's very low bandwidth. And also we partner with some uh, vehicle, the electric, uh, electronic uh, vehicle producers to bake, to, uh, to bake our cool badge in their vehicles. And uh, very exciting, we also deploy our edge on the satellite, so it's it's very low bandwidth, high latency cases too. Uh, so let me deep dive a little bit to our uh, satellite deployment. So that is a low earth orbit satellite. So the challenge is uh, the resource on the edge, I mean the satellite is very limited. So the analysis precision is very low. The satellite do the data collection, ground analysis, and they want to do the massive data transaction. Um, however, it's very challenging to the satellite ground network and the application operation and management or update are very difficult. That's all the challenges. So our solution is say, okay, we do multiple mode collaborative inference. When you do the inference on the remote, so the satellite the application will break down and use uh, small models so instead of a large AI model, we tailor the small models to reduce the latency and the ground station. We use a large regular model to felicitate the sample identification. Basically, we want to do the data clean and data uh, sampling on the uh, edge side to reduce the actual data need to do the uh, remote, I mean the satellite to ground communication. So in this case, we do the incremental training on the hard samples. We won't do every, every uh, training on every node. So it will increment from the previous results. So we also automatic update locally, make this satellite very, it's more smarter. So, and as I said, we do the, in this cloud native way, to manage the applications. The ground station will hold a full review of satellite resource like your dashboard on Kubernetes uh, control plane. And you can see the application status, you can do the logging. 
with this way, uh, you can see the satellite to ground data transmission, we reduce 90%, more than 90%. Also, we do the collaborative inference on both large and small models, depends on your location, to improve the ob object recognition, the precision is up to more than 50%. Here is the, uh, another one is uh, offshore oil deployment. So it's similar to, uh, it's similar to the other node. Uh, it's a typical high latency, uh, low bandwidth cases because all this uh, offshore oil field is deployed over the sea and you can either transfer from the radio network uh, or you have to transfer from the satellite. So this way, uh, the latency is high, the communication and the bandwidth is low. So we do similar to this, we optimize the transition and also uh, we, then we pick the radio network or satellite transfer data there. Uh, similar, we want to do this in cloud native way. On your dev, on your basically on your shore or on the land, you have a overview of everything. Uh, the application, you manage the application deploy on the remote field. Similar to the previous oil case, you can manage your lifecycle application through your cloud dashboard. So the last, uh, not the least, I'm talking about our community. So it's very important to maintain a open governance and open community. You can see since inception of our work is steady growing the contributors. Now we have almost 7,000 stars and more than uh, almost uh, it's 1,900 1, plus forks, we have more, almost 1,500 contributors from different companies, so it's more than uh, 100 organizations. It's from different companies in the last year. Uh, I'm talking about the open governments model, so as I mentioned, we have a different six, so including the SIG IoT, SIG Robotic, SIG AI, and very important that during the last year, we have our steering committee is from diff seven committee members, uh, steering committee members from uh, six different companies. And we have 11 six. So the signal is similar to, is we are trying to do the similar things to upstream Kubernetes community. We have a signal to do the uh, node control uh, scheduling and uh, this device, SIG device IoT is do the device mapper and mentioned uh, control the IoT device. SIG networking is now focusing on the edge mesh. SIG scalability is trying to scale up our deployment. Now uh, we can manage 50,000 more edge node in one deployment and SIG security has achieve a lot of things during the last last one and one half years. We, as I mentioned, there is a security and also we formalize our uh, vulnerability management process. Uh, SIG Robotics is control the robots and also work with the vehicles. Uh, SIG AI is do the collaborative uh, learning. So we try to do a small model inference on the edge node, large model in the uh, cloud node, and also we do the collaborative training. So you, without transfer a large amount of data from edge to cloud, so you can do a small training also on your edge case, uh, edge node. Uh, Sigmac is working with the, the uh, telecom, is telecom uh, co uh, partners to do the uh, the Mac, and also we have one more working group is the uh, wireless group. Oh, there's a 
a few more is forming the six. One is the SIG release, we try to formalize our release procedure, and also SIG testing, uh, do the conformance testing for uh, our community. If you are interested, please join the uh, SIG. These two SIG are open to call for participations. Uh, here is our landscape. So in the industry scenario, we have AI, LT, Mac, robotics, and the second layer is the extensive core framework. We have the edge cloud scheduling. The core framework is mainly uh, due by the SIG node. Uh, edge cloud orchestration is similar to uh, Kubernetes. The runtime, we support uh, containers, VMs, so which in the same same deployment we can mix we are trying to mix the container node and also the VM node in the same deployment. Uh, we also with work with the Wasm community to have support that. Uh, <coughs> also we do the heterogeneous resource support. In the you can see in the edge management, heterogeneous hardware. And in the leaf device, so it's all kind of devices we already support, and the Bluetooth is incoming. Uh, one of the important support in the latest 1.15 release is we supporting the Windows uh, node right now. Uh, if you're interested, you can go to our website. We provide our roadmap. So I have about uh, six minutes left. I'm happy to answer all your, all your questions in for our community. Uh, good talk. Uh, thanks. Uh, one question about the edge portion of the uh, software. How do you bootstrap this onto the uh, edge devices? Uh, allow it to talk to the cloud control piece? Uh, let me show you. So we have a device mapper. Basically, we use a device twin. So from the cloud side, you can see through your metadata. So basically, it's a metadata describe your device. So you can control a device uh, state through your metadata, basically on, off, or for example, you have uh, the traffic light, you can change to red, green, yellow from your metadata change from your cloud. So it will pass down to the edge node and then we use device train to control your device. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think my question is a little different. Okay. And uh, uh, I'm wondering, let's say you are behind the LTE device, right? And uh, normally there's only one way communication. You can have the device talk to the cloud side of the control plane, but you cannot have the control plane to launching uh, your pod or something uh, initiate that from the pod at the first time, right? So you need to have the device side to bootstrap to understand where the call home is, you know, all those information at the beginning, right, on the device. Uh, normally, uh, edge node is behind the firewall behind the net device, behind the LTE. So from the internet, there's no way to access the edge nodes uh, without the edge node bootstrapping mechanism. Uh, 
yeah, let me show you. Uh, Thank you for this is a good question. You, uh, you see, uh, in this one, we do the edge, basically the edge is very close to your device. So in order to go across the drive, uh, firewalls, so we have this uh, cloud core, edge core communication. So basically we set up a tunneling, is communication uh, between cloud core, edge core. Basically the communication initiate is not from cloud to the edge, but from edge to the cloud. So I, I think uh, you can configure your firewall, say block all the ingress data, but for egress, you can allow that. So basically the cloud core initiate, we have a long running connection, as a web socket, you're, uh, by default, you can choose a uh, quick as an alternative. So basically in this way, you can cross your firewall, you set up your, uh, the uh, connection from your edge to cloud and keep that open, keep that connected. So in this way, you can have a two-way duplex communication between cloud and edge. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But somebody needs to prepare that uh, the core edge core side, the device side, to have the configuration including the security mechanism to access which control plane, you know, uh, with the capability of the uh, security portion, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, thank you. I think the good question in the security, yeah, in the bootstrap, you, uh, we work with our uh, edge node providers when they have a, in production, uh, they have a default pod back in, in, in their firmware or when they boot up, so it's connect to your control plane uh, in a uh, predefined uh, security port. In this way, then you do the OTA update to update the latest uh, secure, uh, your latest uh, edge control plane. Then this way, then you upgrade, then in that way you can define a new or different security port. However, we have a default upgrade server. It's all communicated by the provider, say how you define your bootstrap status or uh, process. Thank you. Hi, uh, great talk. So uh, I had a question. So you're using a lot of gRPC and WebSocket calls. So gRPC from a native load balancing standpoint, Kubernetes doesn't, is very not, not very efficient with that. So how do you do gRPC load balancing based? Uh, so uh, let me, so we, which part? Yeah, so we use a ProPath and the GRPC uh, usually. So, uh, yeah. which load balancing you are talking so, about? Uh, when you connect uh, the mobile devices via the GRPC to the edge nodes? Yeah, uh, yeah we ran out of time, but I really appreciate that you can come. We yeah. can do offline. Thank you.